We've been talking about getting ready, and we've been on a series, getting ready for the new year. And today I want to continue talking about that, and this would be really the last sermon on really getting ready for the new year in 2020. But, uh, but I, want you to, I want you to think about this portion of Scripture we're going to read about tonight. And it's about getting ready for Jesus' return. And the reason I want to talk to you about that, we need to have an awareness of the shortness and brevity of life that each one, uh, each one of us have. The scripture says that our lives on earth are but a little vapor. We're here, we're gone. We do need to think about eternity. Not, our own, not only our own eternity, but all the people that we know, are they ready? Are they saved? Are they born again? Because if they're ever gonna get saved, there's only gonna be one way. A believer is gonna have to reach out to a non-believer and let them know what Jesus has done for them. Once we stop preaching the good news, we stop testifying, no one else is gonna be saved. So let's live for eternity. Now Jesus was talking about a scripture and in this uh, uh, was mentioned, in, uh, he, he spoke and he said this. He said that we don't know when he's coming. He doesn't even know when he's coming, but he's coming. And this scripture in Matthew 25 it's talking about being prepared when Jesus returns. Let's look at Matthew 25. We're going to read verse 1 all the way to 13. But we'll start with verse 1 today. It says, that Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Verse 2. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise, enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and they fell asleep. At midnight, they aroused, they roused by, by the shout, look, the bridegroom is coming, come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up, prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to, the shop, go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom or the groom came. Then those who were ready went with, with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must watch. For you do not know the day or the hour of my return. We're going to dive into this scripture, but I want you to think about life. Jesus Christ can come back before 2021. The other thing that might happen before 2021 or in 2021, any one of us can breathe our last breath. In these last three months, I think we've done maybe 30 plus funerals. People passing for different reasons. Some from COVID, some from car accidents, some through violence, heart attacks, strokes, dying in their sleep. A lot of young people dying as well. It wasn't just a whole bunch of older people dying. I think the majority of them were 30 or younger. They thought, I'll get out of 2020, but it didn't happen. We're going to go into 2021. Understand this, that's not guaranteed that we'll get through that. There is a guarantee that one day Jesus Christ is coming back. And there is another guarantee that one day you'll breathe your last breath. We have car insurance just in case we have an accident. We have life insurance, to take care of our family. But most people aren't, don't have any salvation assurance. 
that they know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm right with God. So this scripture begins to remind us of the eternal realm. And he says this in verse one, the, then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. This describes the kingdom of heaven. It describes the spiritual realm. There's a realm where God is ruling, where he's in charge. And you might be saying, isn't he in charge of this physical realm, this earth realm right now? No, he's not totally in charge of this physical earth realm. The Bible says that there's a prince of darkness or a, a God of this world, which is the devil. And that's why there's so much pain and suffering and death and violence. Because there's a system here that's not operating in agreement with the kingdom of heaven. But there's going to be a day that this system is done away with. And all that's going to be left is the kingdom of heaven where Jesus is king. And everyone in that kingdom will have one thing in common. Jesus will be their ruler. How we, can we enter into that kingdom? Of course we could enter into that kingdom. All we need to do is call on Jesus to be our Lord and our Savior and confess him as our king and leader and deliverer. Now we look at this portion of scripture and it talks about 10 bridesmaids. It could have been 10 plumbers, 10 farmers, 10 nurses. It just happened to be 10 bridesmaids because it was a really good example for the day. Because back in those days when someone got married, there were three stages to marriage. The first stage was, the first stage was, was when it was all said and done, was engagement. Now, back in those days, you just didn't get engaged. How you got engaged is your parents got together and they picked your husband or wife for you. So the parents would come together and they say, I got a daughter and then, the, and then I think she'd match up with your son and, and the father would be looking for a daughter, for a wife, for a daughter-in-law. And they would just come together. The fathers would come together and they would make an agreement. That was the engagement. Not necessarily that they ever meet, but there would be an engagement. And then the father would come to the daughter and say, daughter, I got your husband for you. You are now engaged. And then what they would do, the next step, is to be betrothed. And this is when they would come together and make a formal agreement, made, make a formal agreement and a ceremony with mutual promises to each other. So they'd come together and make promises, and then they would separate again. They would separate for a whole year until the third part. The third part was the marriage. And why would it be for a whole year? Because Hud or the future husband or the one that's betrothed to the young lady would go and prepare a home and get ready for this young lady to take her into his home. And he would come when the house was ready. Now the bride and the bridesmaids, we're talking about the bridesmaids. I've always, you know, when you look at the scripture, a lot of people think that the bridesmaids are brides. They're not bridesmaids. They're part of the wedding party. Brides, there's 10 bridesmaids. They're part of the wedding party. And what they would do all, the, the, the bride and the bridesmaid would get ready for this marriage day, but they didn't know when it was coming. So their responsibility was always to stay ready, keep their lamps on. If he came in the middle of night like he did, they would have light and they could meet the, the groom and then they could go to the bride and, and begin to celebrate the wedding. Now, this scripture describes two categories of people, and it describes the ready and not ready, or the fool and the wise. In verse, verse 2, it says this, five of them were foolish and five were wise. Now, all of them wanted to meet the bridegroom. All of them wanted to be ready because the scripture says that they, the ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet, wanted to meet the bridegroom. So you know what this means is that every single person wants to go to heaven. It's a, well, so it's, I don't even believe in God. Well, that's fine until you die. And then when you die and you end up in hell, you're going to want to be in heaven. When, when we do funerals, we don't say, 
the person's in hell. If we just barely think that they made a confession of faith, what we're doing is just going with that because we want them to go to heaven. So we're looking for some proof that they had some type of wisdom. They say, well, what does it mean to be foolish? The word foolish means this, godless or immoral. So the word foolish means that there were five of these bridesmaids were foolish or they were godless without God. They were immoral, but they thought, I, could be, I don't need God, I'm good enough, and I don't need to live a moral life, and I could still go to heaven, and I could still see the groom, and I could still have eternal life. But the Bible says the other five were wise. There's a scripture that says, and I want you to think about the, the fool for a minute. In Psalms 14.1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool says in his heart, there's no God. Now, it is foolish to say there's no God when there's so much proof of God. Look at creation. Look at the sun. The sun doesn't run out of energy, but everything else runs out of energy. Right now we're dependent on solar energy because all other energy, all other energy wears out. Batteries wear out. They're trying to find ways to, like I got a, a car that's a part electric and we charge it, but it only goes like 20 miles on electricity. And if you have a Tesla, it might go two to 300 miles, but, but that's about it. And then you have to charge it for an hour or whatever, to, or maybe all night to get that car going. Batteries or power. Just think about the whole world right now. It's being charged by an invisible energy. And who created all that power? Power comes from power. Every single thing that you see, whether it's your shoes or I just got a brand new jacket for Christmas and that's why I'm wearing it. I got brand new shoes here to match for Christmas. I'm wearing this, but I do know this, someone made it. If I'm given credit for these shoes, did I see the maker of these shoes? No, but they put their name on it. These are coach shoes. Someone bought them for me. That's why I'm wearing them. But the idea, they're putting their signature on it. These are coach shoes. And then someone bought me this coach jacket. It just worked out perfectly. I got a nice, <laughs> I got a nice outfit tonight. But I want you to know this. I'm not ignorant to think that no one made these shoes. They just appeared on my feet. Now we're talking about earth. We're talking about life. We're talking about your breath. The scientists still can't create something out of nothing. Even if we went to right now to the, the smartest scientists in the world and we put them all in a room and we said this, we just have one little, little, little assignment for you. Just make a grain of sand. Oh, no problem. Out of nothing. Oh, that's a problem. Because there's no way you could create something out of nothing. And if you believe that something came from nothing, you're a fool. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. But if you're honest within you, you know that the real you is not this body. The real you is the one that's thinking. The real you is that soul. The real you thinks there has to be more to life than this. But she was, these five virgins or five uh, bridesmaids, five of them were really foolish. They were godless. And the other five, the scripture says, were wise. And you know what that means? There's only two categories. There's the fools and then there's the wise. And what does it mean to be wise? This is what it means to be wise. Be, having wisdom means this. Knowing what to do, knowing right and wrong, or knowing what to do and then doing it. The, the fools are heedless. Heedless means they never heed instruction. They hear it, but they don't do it. They might even tell you, I know what it is. I know what to do. Even knowing what to do doesn't make you wise. Knowing what to do and doing it makes you wise. 
The wise is another great scripture in Proverbs 9.10 that describes the wise. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Respect and honor for God is the beginning of knowing right and wrong, making choices, especially eternal choices. Could it be you have life insurance, car insurance, medical insurance, but you have no salvation assurance? You don't know? And you know for sure you might get in a car accident, you might not. You might get sick, maybe not. You might even have insurance in case you lose your job. You might not lose your job, but there's one thing for sure. One day you're going to breathe your last breath and you're going to stand before God. Let's not go into 2021 without salvation assurance. Which group are we part of? The fools or the wise? Let's keep on reading. The five who were foolish didn't take, verse 3, didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps. But the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. Now, this is what it says. The wise had enough. The fools did not have enough. But this is what the assumption is. The fools thought they had enough. There's many people right now that believe if they were to die right now, that they're good enough. I'm good enough in my own. I'm good enough because I'm a, I, I could get into heaven. I'm a pretty good person. They thought, they thought they were ready. But there's going to be many people when they stand before God, they're going to realize they didn't have enough. The, the word uh, oil represents the Holy Spirit. So there are those that have the Holy Spirit and there are those that do not. They have spirit, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. So these fool, foolish brides or bridesmaids, they didn't, what, they didn't have enough. They didn't have enough. Now there's a scripture in Romans 8, 9, and it says this. But you are not ruled by your sinful nature. You are ruled by the spirit if that spirit of God really lives in you. But whoever does not have the spirit of Christ, whoever does not have the spirit of Christ, whoever does not have the Holy Spirit does not belong to Christ. Whoever doesn't have the oil of the Holy Spirit does not belong to Christ. And it's only through our faith in Christ that we're ever good enough or have enough. I have enough because, not because I'm enough, or I'm good enough, is because God's good enough. I get into heaven and I'm ready for Jesus' return, not because I'm perfect, but he's perfect. He forgave my sins. He saved me. He delivered me. And he gave me eternal life. Look at the scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, for God took the sinless Christ. I want you to think about this. Jesus never sinned. And poured into him our sins. So Jesus was on the cross, and what was poured on him? Every one of our sins. Then in exchange, then in exchange, he poured God's goodness into us. Wow. Look at this picture. I'm not good enough. This foolish, foolish bridesmaids thought they were good enough, but inside of them was only sin. But this is the picture. God takes every one of us, every mistake we've ever done, every wrong we've ever done, every lie we've ever done, all the pornography, all the hate, all the adultery, all the lying, every wrong thing we've done, and this is what he does with it. He pours it all into Jesus to pay the price for every one of our sins. Jesus poured himself out as a blood offering so we could be forgiven. You know what he did? He took the penalty for every one of our sins. We deserve death, but Jesus took our place because he loved us so much and he knew we weren't good enough. But and then, Jesus, this is what happens when you receive Jesus. 
God takes all of the goodness and the perfection of Jesus, and then he pours it into us. We're emptied of sin, and then this is what happens. And this is what happens. And then we're filled with Jesus' perfect righteousness. And now the wise bridesmaids, because they're not godless, they're full of God, they have eternal life, they believe in Jesus, they have more than enough oil. They're ready when Jesus comes. They're ready if they were to die that day or that week. They're ready because they have the goodness or the perfection or the righteousness of God in them. Let's keep on reading. When the bridegroom was delayed, the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Now, when I look at the scripture, I think about, I think this, none of them should have fell asleep. But that's not reality. We all fall asleep. There's no sin in falling asleep. Well, they were waiting for the bridegroom. Yeah, but they didn't know when he was coming. They still had to sleep. But the delay, say with me, delay. Now, the delay, why does Jesus delay? He says he's coming back. But why is he delaying? The reason he's delaying, he's given us time to get the oil. He's given us time to get ready. For those that are not ready, don't act like you're ready. They were falling asleep. Now, the ones that were ready could fall asleep. It's not a problem because they're ready. They're ready for anything. They're ready for death. They're ready for Jesus to come. They're good. But there's people that are in the church and they're acting ready, but they're not ready. What he's saying, make sure, go ahead, take a nap, relax, but don't relax in your sin. Don't relax, relax in your godless life. Don't relax in your addiction. Don't relax in, 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 your, in your wickedness. Don't relax there. Make sure you're repentant of that and use the delay to get ready. So why is Jesus delaying? He wants to make sure all 10 are ready. Look at the scripture. It says, it says this in 2 Peter 3, 9. It says, the Lord does not delay as though he were unable to act. And is not slow about his promise as some count slowness. Well, Jesus, I've been hearing that he's going to come back since I was a little baby. I know. How old are you? You're only 20 years old, 30 years old. We're talking about eternity. We're talking about your eternal life. The Bible says a day is like a thousand years to the Lord. God's not tripping about your 20 years or 30 years and thinking, that's a long time. To him, it's nothing. But what is something to him? What's the big deal to him? Is if you're ready. Because there's going to be a time where time, as we know it, ends. And then we're going to go into eternity. Forever. There are those that are going to be there and there are going to be those that are not there. We're going into 2021 and we have to understand this. We need to make sure we get this one thing right. That we have the oil. That we have the Holy Spirit. That we're born again. That we have Jesus inside of us. So don't use your time to party. Don't use your time. This is why the devil loves the New Year's. So why does the devil love the New Year's? Because the most, of, most of the people, he has them getting drunk and getting high and doing lewd stuff on the New Year. Because he knows this. The, the way they start is the way they'll continue. Godless. Addicted. Sinful. Living for just pleasure. Fornicating. Oh, man. We have nobody in this place. I'm talking to myself, I guess. Is someone hearing me? We might. I want you to get this. Christian fornicators. Those two don't work. You're asleep. The fools are immoral. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I guess it's a little easier to preach it because I'm not seeing any faces. But I love you. 
God loves you. Jesus Christ could come back today. He could come back tomorrow. He could come back 10 years from now. But there's one thing for sure. Every single one of us will face him face to face. And every one of us want to go to heaven. This is a warning that Jesus gave to the people and he gives to the church. Wake up. Which category are you in? The fools or the wise? Why weren't they ready? Why didn't they have any extra oil? Maybe they were procrastinating. One of these days I'll give my life to Jesus, but not now. I like smoking my weed. When I'm done with this dime bag, I'll be ready. When I'm done with these cookies, I'll be ready. (laughs) Whatever your excuse is, tomorrow's not guaranteed. Today's your moment. Today's your day of salvation. Today's your day to get the oil. Today's your day to get the Holy Spirit. Today's the day to be forgiven. Well, let's look at this. At midnight, verse 6, they were roused by the shout. Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. When Jesus comes back, there's going to be a shout in the heavens. Say, Pastor, do you really believe that stuff? Well, let me, let me give it to you this way. Do you, did you believe that COVID was going to hit the whole world last year? If someone would have told you next year they're going to cut, they're going to shut down every sporting facility. Movie theaters are going to shut down. Hundreds of thousands of people are going to die from some type of real serious flu. You would have said, you're crazy, homie. That's not even historical. That's unprecedented. I've never seen something like that. So they're going to, no more Dodger games, no more Laker games. We can't go to them. No. No more movie theaters. They're going to shut down the restaurants. You would think, no, man, that's the end of the world. But now I think we've almost gotten used to the end of the world. Because we are in the end of the world. The Bible says in the last days there will be pandemics. Not one, but coming multiple pandemics. So this might be the beginning of pandemics. That's why we need to make sure that our lives are right. Our souls are right. And believers, we got to make sure that we're on mission to make sure those that are ready, helping them get ready. So he came at midnight. All the bridesmaids, all of them, got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. It's foolish to think that you could get to heaven based on your association. You can't get to heaven with someone else's preparation. They were fooled. Maybe they thought it. If we run out of oil, they got some extra oil. They could give it to us. No one has any extra salvation. My, the, the faith that saved me saved me. It doesn't save my girls. My girls could be in a Christian home where we're hearing preaching every single day and still be lost and still be foolish and still be godless. You know what's crazy about this? They didn't realize that they weren't ready until it was time. Up to this point, they deceived themselves. We are ready to meet the groom. We are ready to meet Jesus. So now they find out we're not ready. We don't have enough. We're falling short. And this is a reality. We all fall short of the glory of God. We're falling short. And they're asking now, can you give us some of your extra oil? Can you give me some of your salvation? Can you give me some of your eternal life? Can you give me some of your faith? And you know what the wise, wise bridesmaid said? 
You have to go out there and get it yourself. No one can repent for you. No one can say this is the day of salvation for you. Jesus knocks. You hear this message. But be careful that you're not so hard-headed that you become a fool. You know what was one of the scariest things that ever happens on earth is this. Someone saying no to Jesus. Why is that so scary and so dangerous? Because you could get in the habit of saying no. The Bible says that your conscience can be severed with a hot iron. You know what that means? It could, your conscience can become numb if you keep saying no. And you could get to the point that you believe your doubt more than your faith. God's giving you a measure of faith. God's given us all a lamp. You know what that means? Every single person has a potential to shine light. Every single person has a potential to be saved. Every single person has a potential to have eternal life. But they need the oil. Let's look at the scripture. They said, no, we don't. The other replied, we don't have enough oil for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. You know what they're saying? Those that were ready go with Jesus. Those that are not ready will not go with Jesus. There's such thing as being too late. Once you die, it's too late. The scripture says this, that the door is locked. And what do they do when the door is locked? They're not with Jesus. They had a dream to go to heaven. They had a dream of eternal life. They wanted to be with their friends. They wanted to enjoy life. See, I'm telling you, everybody wants to go to heaven, believe it or not. Every single person, when they get locked out, they want entrance in. But right now, the door is open of opportunity. And this is our time to call on Jesus to be saved. But there could be a time, it's too late. Some will be ready and some will not. Look at this. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside. Where'd they stand? Calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us, please. We're in pain out here. This is not what we imagined. We thought we were ready. Lord, okay, we'll bow now. What do we need to do? But there's a problem. The Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue confess. The sad thing is some people are going to be confessing, Lord, at the wrong time. It still will be too late. You could only be saved while it's called today. You could only be saved if you respond to a message like this. Why is God having us speak this message? The Holy Spirit is waking up the church. There's people that aren't saved that are in the church building. There's people that aren't saved. They don't have eternal life. They're godless and they're watching right now. There's family members that were walking by, eating breakfast with them and not mentioning Jesus to them. They're not saved. And if they're not saved, they will not be with you. In heaven, enjoying this marriage banquet. But the Lord, his, Lord, open the door. But he called back and he said this, believe me, I don't know you. And this says it all. This says the whole story. Me and you never had a relationship. That's the problem. That's why they're in the fool category. 
These aren't people that were Christians that backslid. These are people that never knew God, period. And there's a conclusion. Jesus warns us. And he makes it really personal. Personal. It says, so, conclusion to the story. So you too must keep watch. For you don't know the day or the hour of my return. What is this scripture saying? Don't fall asleep. Don't go through life and forget about your eternity. Be alert. Be aware. Be awake. And realize that tomorrow is not guaranteed. And there will be a day when Jesus comes back. After I preach a sermon like this, I start thinking, Jesus, are you coming back like tomorrow or tonight? Or am I preaching to someone that's listening right now that's not going to make it into 2021? And there's such a sense of urgency for them to get saved today because they're in the wrong category. They have the potential to be saved. They have the lamp. They have an opportunity. They know Jesus is coming. They know the word of God, but yet they're not prepared. I'm talking to someone right now that you've been playing like with God and you've been playing with your whole future, your eternal life. You're not ready. You've chosen temporary sin in exchange for eternal life. What shall, what shall man give in exchange for his soul? What is so fun out there that you would give up your purpose, your life, your eternal freedom, your eternal life, your family? What is it that you're doing that's so amazing? This I do know, nothing. Because without Christ, the truth is there's some misery inside of you. There's an emptiness inside of you. And I know this, you have no peace. There's no peace. And I'm sure COVID's freaking you out. But you're thinking, this is the only life I have. I got to protect it. But God has put eternity in our heart. This life we're just passing through. I would say this life is just a test. Are you going to pass or fail? Are you going to be a fool or wise? What's a wise person? They know what to do. And then they do it. Today's your day. You're saying, when the new year comes, I'm going to give my life to Jesus. I'm, I, just, I just want to party for another 24 hours. Hmm. I wonder how many people are saying that, that don't have 24 hours. And I wonder how many people are, going to say, are saying that, they're going to keep saying that, and the devil's actually giving you a script to hell. You're speaking his words. Not today. Tomorrow, later on. The fool, they're heedless. They don't heed. Today's your day. I love you. God loves you. But if you say, if you're, what you said, Pastor, I, I get it. I know what category I'm in. I'm the fool. I'm godless. I'm not ready. I'm, I right now know I'm falling short of the standards of God. And there's no amount of good I could do to make up for the bad I've done. I know, I'm a sinner. That's great. The next step is, are you ready? Are you ready to turn from the life that's ruining you, depressing you, hurting you, and everyone around you? Are you ready to turn from that empty life to have the abundant life, the great life? It could happen today. Today's your day of salvation. Call on Jesus. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ died for your sins and you confess with your mouth that he's your Lord, that he rose again, he's your Lord, you'll be saved. Today's your day of salvation. If you're saying, Pastor, I don't know if I'm right with God, but I want to get right with God. 
I realize I don't know. I, I don't have enough. I, I want to be saved. I want God's spirit in me. I want to place my faith in Jesus Christ. Today's your day. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. It's just a prayer. But you're giving your heart to Jesus. He loves you so much. This is your day. You come with your broken heart. You come with your sin. You come with your addiction. You come with your pain. You come with all of it. That God loves you and he welcomes you. He just set, he told us this story so that we would be ready, the conclusion. There's only one way to be ready. Jesus is the only one that can save us. He saves you. You don't save yourself. You just agree. Save me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Fill me with your spirit. Give me a new life. Pray with me. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask you now to forgive me for all my sins. I believe that on that cross, all my sin was poured into you. And you were punished for every wrong I've done so that I could be forgiven and set free and no longer live a life of guilt and shame. Today I'm asking you to fill me with all of your goodness, all of your love, with your Holy Spirit. Jesus, save me. I believe now I'm born again. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And from this day forward, I will live for you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I have eternal life. I am now part of the wise group. I am wise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Wow, God is good. If you said that prayer right now, we are celebrating you right now. And heaven is having a big old party for you. Jesus Christ is coming back, but we're ready. Now, say this with me. Next step. There's always a next step. You're starting your walk with Christ. Get ready to take the next step. Your next step is action. Faith without action produces no results. Faith without action produces no results. If we're going to follow Jesus, this is how we follow him. Following instruction. Following his commands. This is what I want you to do. This is your first step to be mentored and discipled. Is go to a website, igotsaved.com. On your browser, you just put igotsaved.com. Fill out your information and this is what we're going to do. We're going to do our part. We're going to follow up on you and help you with your next step. That's your next step. And then we have so many more steps after that. Tomorrow night, let's all join together. Get your friends, your family, your relatives. Let's come together in front of our TVs and, and let's come together and let's start or end the year in worship, hearing testimonies, hearing the Word of God, and let's go into 2021. And then next Wednesday, next Wednesday, we are starting our 21-day fast. This Sunday, the first Sunday of the year, you could have perfect attendance. Get here. It's, it's going to be awesome. There's nothing like being in the house of God. We got a word for you tomorrow night, and we got a word for you Sunday morning. Love you. God bless you. Remember this. If anybody, if, if God is for you, there's no one to come against you. We love you so much. You need prayer, just go online and we'll make sure we pray for you. God bless you. Love you. See you tomorrow night and also Sunday morning. Love you.